Good morning. So it is just about seven. We're about to head out, head to New Orleans so I can go get rehabbed. Pretty fucking exciting stuff. So coffee in me, watching a little Archer, and uh, we're about to punch out. So see you guys on the road. Just rolled up on the hospital to see what the rehab is gonna look like. Ah, a little stiff after sitting in the car for an hour. Yay, rehab. positive stuff happy with the progress I've got so we're just gonna keep to it add a few different exercises into my routine get range of motion back that's number one So that was an excellent appointment. I like that PT a lot more. The shame is I'm probably not gonna drive an hour to come see him. So I'll come back in a couple weeks, follow the routine that he gave me, which is more of the same that we've been doing. But I just like the guy a lot more. A lot less ego, a lot more interested in working with me to get to the goals that I have and from where I'm currently sitting on my rehab, not basing it completely off the chart of, you're two weeks out, this is what we do. We're gonna go do a little bit of New Orleans exploring, find some lunch, and then probably head home. Now it's time to fucking eat, I'm starving. So the fasting stuff with keto has gone pretty well. Um, I am, today didn't do it on purpose, but when I do it, it doesn't make a big difference, right? You just kinda of ride it out until, until lunch, like 11 o'clock for me. And you figure I haven't eaten since about eight o'clock last night. So this will be a good meal, and we'll keep it keto. I'm a keto kid. You have to say just like the keto kid. And while I do, for the most part, really dislike coming down to New Orleans, traffic's always fucked. There's no parking. People are kind of dicks. That's not necessarily true. I'm really hungry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this area, like this kind of um, Magazine Street, Mid City area, is really cool. Is this considered mid city? We're in uptown. We're in uptown. Also, the way that New Orleans describes what part of the city you're in are also completely fucked because it doesn't have to do with north, south, east, or west. It all has to do with the fucking river. The river runs through it. Still waters run deep. All right, the name of this joint for lunch is Apolline. Pauline. Another name I can hardly pronounce. But I think she said there are steaks on the menu. So I should be able to get some meat. Back home, got some rehab done this morning. I was a little tired, just came home. 
Hung out with the wife a little bit, laid down. Just got in. What you fuck? Fucking fanny pack. That's basically for the Arnold. I imagine I'm gonna wear fucking close to sweatpants the entire time I'm there, and this gives me some extra room for stuff. Following some of Mike's lead. Seems the fanny pack's the way to go. Went with the Herschel. Chrissy's got one, Chloe's got one. I just wanna be part of the team. Get some food in. Cheeseburger bowl. I'm gonna do a little bit of lifting. My uh, builder friend, Luke, is coming over. He's also gimped up on one leg pretty hardcore. And we're gonna train. I'm gonna do some, uh, well, fucking upper body, mostly. Do some back, some biceps, some triceps. Gonna work on doing some accessory work with hamstrings. Right? Maybe some really light good mornings? See what we can do. Wanna address another question I've been getting a lot having to do with keto stuff. Um, seems the question has to be like, how does ketogenic diet affect your strength? So the truth of that is, no diet affects your strength. You're either gonna be in a caloric surplus or a deficit. As you lose weight, you're gonna lose strength. This is for fucking anyone. You can lose some weight and maintain your strength, but you're gonna lose some strength, especially if you're losing an obscene amount of weight. If you're losing 10% of your body weight, you're gonna lose some strength. So set your goals accordingly. The other thing is, if you're not trying to lean down, you're not trying to lose weight, does a ketogenic diet work for you that way? Of course it does. You can gain weight or lose weight on any diet as well. There's no magical combination of foods or fats or any of that thing that's gonna have you gain weight or lose weight. It's simply caloric surplus, caloric deficit. So if you are using more calories in a day than you are taking in, you are going to lose weight. If you are taking in more calories than you are spending, you're going to gain weight. That's it. That's as simple as it fucking gets. Now, people typically, when they're bulking, eat shittier foods, and uh, that way it's easier to hit a surplus without having the volume that you do trying to maintain just that shy deficit. So no one wants to feel hungry, right? So that's one of the things I've noticed from the ketogenic diet. Right now, I'm on a pretty good deficit, it seems, since I'm losing weight kind of rapidly, which is my biggest goal right now. But with the majority of my, you know, like 60% of my intake being fat and my body using fat, I don't get hungry as often. I also stay pretty even as far as uh, not freaking out from sugar. So that's what I'm noticing. Uh, I was sitting 260 again this morning. Should be in the 250s without, uh, unless I fuck something up here pretty soon. Should gotta be less gross than Mark Bell. Hashtag. All right, so that's my experience with it. Mark and his brother Chris are putting out a ton of info on keto right now that's super helpful. Check their stuff out. I'm gonna go left. Pirate party. So Luke's banged up too. And then we got a woman training with us, so like that's a good thing. I would say this is by far the best place to be depressed. Yeah. Not bad. It's not a better place that you want to be depressed than right here. No, we'll get you we'll get you sorted, brother. film a lot of that workout. The garage was full with people and we were just kind of rolling and keeping moving and I, I tried to get some shots but 
just it didn't didn't work out really great getting to add Luke into doing some lifting so Luke had a meniscus tear uh, also has an ACL that's kind of fucked up so had knee surgery just like in the same window as I do and so he's kind of dealing with a lot of the same stuff but different rehab because of restrictions due to like a bucket meniscus tear and then it being sutured together Luke's also a guy that competes like in triathlons, right? Now this is about as far away from what my expertise or training is. I know Luke and I know that he operates a lot like I do. So he's a very energetic guy and, and, and likes always being on the go. And this knee has put him in this place where he's stuck and he's relying on someone else for this and he's not getting the amount of exercise he normally does. And so he's kind of entered this He's just down. He's not him. He's kind of just not feeling it. And so being able to take him in and lift and kill him on the assault bike without damaging the knee, you know, let him put out some effort, put out some energy. You get right and just burn a little bit was, was great. And it reminded me of this is also part of why I'm doing it. It's, it's this part of well, self-medicating by, by training, right? This is, this is how I relieve stress. This is how... I get through rehab is to focus on something else to, to fatigue another muscle, right? We also got to do some rehab stuff that I'm doing to help him get the quad firing with the power dot. We also did some scraping and did some uh, other work trying to get back to full extension. Now that's been, that's my new fucking focus. And so I'll be doing a lot of extension work and smashing my quad using a mobility sleeve while kind of keeping the ankle just a little bit elevated, trying to get back to hyper extension that my left leg normally lives in, right? So that's where we want to get back. And that was kind of via my, my physical therapist I met with today. But that was a really great training session. The girls were here, Ashley and Claire were doing their thing on the rower and uh, doing some cleans. And Luke and I did our thing. So four people in the garage gets a little packed, which was awesome. But I got a good upper body, upper back workout and then did some buys and tries. And then I get to hang out with my beautiful wife for the rest of a beautiful Friday evening. And that's it. Thank you guys for hanging out and that's really the day. So we're gonna keep pressing forward every day. I'm not someone who tries to bring strangers into my garage and workout environment on a regular basis. That's not my cup of tea. I'm not a coach. I'm not really a motivator. I like training with people. And so right now with what my current goals are, it fits for me to be able to, if Luke's available to meet me when I'm going to train, let's, let's do something. Let's just put some fucking effort out and get sweaty. Get a little weird. Just put in the effort. Just do something to keep the head right, to know that you did some work, that you didn't just coast through the day. It's good to be able to share that with someone else, since that's really what's driving me right now. Maybe you know someone that just needs the effort, that they're down, to maybe share whatever it is that you love about training. Not your fucking PRs, and not your, your goal to squat more, any of that, but just love of the barbell. That's what I want to instill in more people is that a stronger life is a better life. And on that note, thank you guys. Spread hate, always party.